And imagine the country you live in being hit by uh, less and less fertile soil, making crop growing increasingly difficult. Sandstorm conditions prevail in the Indian capital and now there are fears of early desertification of the region. Desertification and erosion are both concerns. Soil is the habitat upon which zillions of lives thrive. Because of that thriving life, everything grows, we eat food, other animals grow, everything happens because soil is rich. Once there is no richness in soil, then you have forsaken the planet in many ways. We talk of carbon, we talk of emissions, we talk of pollution at various levels. Before all that, we need to address the most important concern because there is a misunderstanding in the world. There is a campaign to project civic issues as environmental issues. Right now, if plastic bags are floating around in New York City, this is not an ecological issue, this is a civic issue. If our rivers are polluted, this can be fixed. In one or two years, if you set up the necessary purification plants and enforce the law, these are civic issues which can be fixed with a little bit of law enforcement and awareness. But the real issue is soil. The United Nations agencies with enough scientific data, they're clearly saying that we have soil, agricultural soil for another eighty to hundred crops on the planet. This is forty-five to sixty years is what we have agricultural soil. They're calling this a soil extinction. You heard of dinosaurs going extinct, you have heard of dodos going extinct, but this is soil extinction is what we are looking at. The real problem is soil extinction because in the last thirty years, eighty percent of the biomass insects have disappeared from the planet, eighty percent. This is a, a suicide, you know, this is a real suicide. So in forty-five years time or fifty years time, there will be serious food crisis on the planet, it's inevitable. When food crisis comes, well, whoever has the biggest guns will come and take the food. And the chaos and the suffering that we will create for populations around the world is uh, unimaginable. Don't think only the poor people will die. They will kill the rich and rich will die. So this is not to paint a dark picture. This is a reality which has happened many times in our history and once again it is being predicted by top scientists in the world. So what are we going to do? Why is soil going away? Where is it going? See, what is sand becomes soil if you add organic content to it. What is soil becomes sand if you take away all the organic content from it. If you go into a rainforest, the organic content in the soil will be over seventy percent. In normal agricultural soil, the minimum organic content that has to be there to call soil soil is three to six percent. Three percent is the most minimum. But today, for example, in India, sixty-two percent of India's soil, the organic content is 0.5 percent or below that. So literally we are on the verge of desertification. This is across the world, this is not in one country. In United States, the way the land has been used in terms of herbicides, weedicides, pesticides, well, we need to understand nearly eighty-two to eighty-six percent of biodiversity is within the first twelve inches of topsoil. When we plow with machines like tractors plow to a depth of nine to twelve inches and leave it open, this means we are destroying the biodiversity completely. What biodiversity means is, it's the humus in the soil. The word human comes from the word humus. That means this is actually living soil. So it's very, very important that soil becomes the focus because if you put one-third to forty percent of the land, especially in the tropical world, under tree shade, your climate change could be easily reversed. 
land is getting hot simply because it is plowed or it is paved, land has to go under vegetation, whatever kind, natural grasses, bushes, trees, whatever, because all these are serving the ecological activity. And we must also understand soil is a very significant carbon sink. And soil is the largest water soak on the planet. And soil is the basis of all life. This thirty-six to thirty-nine inches of topsoil and on average around the planet is the basis of eighty-seven percent of life on this planet. To keep the biodiversity alive is the most important thing that we need to do right now. Unless we start now, this will not happen. As a part of this, we are unfolding uh, a movement called Conscious Planet to bring maximum number of people. Right now, it looks like climate change, ecology, all these are a playground for the rich and elite. No, this must change. Individual human beings should become conscious about the danger that we are facing. Ecological issues must become election issues and political parties must give significance to ecological issues in their manifestos. Governments must be elected for their concern for ecological issues. This needs to happen. So, we are seeing how to bring about a policy recommendation for 192 countries. The rally is starting on 21st of March, which is the Equinox Day in London. And uh, from London, it's a single lone motorcycle riding through 24 countries, 30,000 kilometers, reaching the Kaveri Basin where we are on ground working in a river basin, which is 83,000 square kilometers and uh, 5.2 million farmers work here. The very body that we carry is soil. Without soil being rich and well, this body and every other life cannot be well. So in terms of ecology, in terms of climate change, the most important thing is that we need to have a conscious approach as to how we manage our soil how we rejuvenate our soil, how we revitalize our soil. This conscious approach and creating a conscious planet is what is most important. Without involving large mass of people, this will not become a reality because we are democratic nations. Unless people say this is what they want, that is not going to happen. So let's create a conscious planet. Let's make it happen.